Welcome back to my channel. Well, well, as you know, I've been talking up mixed reality simulation for quite a while. That is incorporating a physical cockpit into a virtual world using the advantages of VR, but still having the ability to manipulate physical switches, see your hands, read charts, and so on. This requires a headset with quality pass-through video, and until now, the only one that's really available is the Vario XR3, which costs about $6,500, and another $1,500 a year for a subscription. Lufthansa uses it, as you see here, in their training. Of course, they have deep pockets, but for most of us, it's beyond our financial capabilities. I do believe this technology is coming to the consumer, and maybe sooner than we think. I did come across some software recently that allowed me to just try this on a very rudimentary basis. And I'd like to share that with you now and show you what I've learned. Although the app is still in early access beta available on the Steam store, Reality Mixer was quite interesting to me. It allows you to create bounding boxes in your real space that can be incorporated into VR and allow pass-through video to be seen in virtual reality on your headset. It gets this rather crude video from the inside out tracking cameras on some consumer headsets. Since my Vario Aero has no inside out tracking cameras, I had to dust off my old Reverb G2. Although the tracking video is black and white and pretty rough, it did give me my first experience in mixed reality flying. Although I do have a dedicated simulator for VR flying, I decided to use my flat panel simulator so I would have switches and a panel available. Although Reality Mixer only uses one camera on the G2 currently, the effects are fairly interesting as you see here. I set up the bounding box so that I could see the bottom of my instrument panel in my controls and throttle quadrant. Despite the 2D grayscale image, I found it very useful. The menu button on the controller brings up the interface. I selected the cockpit preset, as you see here, which creates a bounding box around you that you're sitting in, as though you're in a cockpit of an airplane or a race car. From this main screen, you can edit the camera boxes. You can also set up the camera and also create profiles to associate certain setups with various aircraft. It seems to be fairly flexible and well thought out. The purpose of this video is not to give you a tutorial though. I just wanted to explain what it can do and show you because if you're the kind of person who's going to play around with the beta software, you probably are the one who can figure it out on your own. I had pretty good results in a couple hours time. Once you're in the bounding box, you can uh, you get these yellow symbols whenever you get in the proximity of one of the walls and you can move those walls of the boxes up, down, left, and right perpendicular to their plane and adjust them to get the right uh, area that you want. I set the sidewalls just short of the door so that I would still see the doors and vertically I put the top just above the top of my control yoke at the bottom of the panel. When the controller gets close to the wall of a box it's disa the panels are disabled so that you can't make accidental inputs. As you can see, it looks pretty good. It shakes a little bit. I think uh, there's some latency problems with the headset. And uh, if I move my head rapidly, it shakes and delays and finally gets to where it should be. You can also level the box. If you don't have it, if the roll is not quite right matching your camera to your uh, physical setup, uh, you can change that with this control here. It's pretty flexible and easy to use. So now let's take a quick flight so I can show you how I found this useful. I can uh, see I can set the parking brake. You can see my uh, mixtures. Turn on the batteries and use the control the switch to start the engine. The ignition switch. Set the throttle and notch your flaps for takeoff. Release the parking brake and we're ready to taxi. I find this pretty useful compared to uh, just reaching in the dark trying to find the switches on my honeycomb yoke. Now this is the Yoko so it has no switches uh, on the unit itself. Now notice I just turned that off. You can set up a switch on your joystick or a keyboard uh, to dis or even your controller to disable that and I'll turn it back on here. As we taxi out, turned on the uh, master for the the uh, the avionics master, 
and we'll come up and take an intersection departure. Obviously the visual quality is really not good and it's not 3D, uh, it's a 2D image uh, for the cockpit, but still it was very useful to be able to see what you were doing with your hands, just to see your hands and legs adds something to it that I've missed in VR. I can't wait for the day that we have good quality uh, images from the pass-through video. So we'll stop here and we'll do a quick run-up. Set the parking brake. Set the power. And then with the ignition we'll do a mag check. Power back and we're ready to go. Parking brake off. I'll turn off the uh, cockpit image, the uh, pass-through video for a second there just to show you that it's quick and easy to turn it on and off. So it, if it's annoying, you can also set the translucency of the image too if you'd like to be able to see through it. I think I had it set for about 90 or 100 percent. So as we take off here, we'll point out that there's very limited uh, documentation, just pretty much what you see on those screens that are in the interface, uh, as might be expected with a, a beta software. It's fairly fairly new. I think it's been out six months or so. Uh, it's pretty well thought out, though. I really do think he's got a good interface, and uh, it's fairly easy to, uh, to figure out. Pretty flexible, too. There's a possibility that you can have bounding boxes that uh, are that disappear when you get far away from them and only come on when you're up close. Then you can create as many of those as you want. I, I say as many, it, numerous. And uh, I tried setting it up so that the panel would uh, be visible uh, using my monitors, but the resolution just wasn't good enough. I had to make the the uh, airspeed indicator almost the size of the monitor to be able to see it clearly. So that's not a solution now. That's why I only use the bottom of the panel to uh, try it out. And uh, you know it's not all that practical because most of those switches are available on uh, say a honeycomb yoke or whatever so um, you wouldn't necessarily need that. But it really is nice being able to see where you're reaching. You can also find your controller if you have it down on your lap, you can look down and grab that. You can also set it up to make an opening for a keyboard so that you can see your keyboard. The resolution's tough, though, to read the actual keys. If you know where the key is, uh, you can do that. Here you can see my controller on my lap there. And uh, we're just going to make a turn back towards the airport here just in a minute. Uh, sorry I moved my head so rapidly, but that's I wasn't thinking that much about being smooth. I was kind of trying to understand the software. You might notice there's some distortion in the image, and I don't know if that's because of, of the uh, capturing software that I used, or uh, I set up the uh, view, and I think I put, uh, I may have set it for both eyes for the mirror, both eyes in dominant left eye. That may be the problem. I wasn't really sure what I was doing there, but as you can see, uh, there's some in the middle of the image between the two eyes. And I think there's sometimes you see the the uh, G530 and 430 are compressed or almost disappear. But I didn't feel like it was worth shooting this again because what I really wanted to show you was the uh, video of the uh, cockpit pass through, and that is uh, that's single image, so it's not. Uh, it's not split. I have a Lynx R1. It was a Kickstarter. Uh, it has a color stereo pass-through that I heard is pretty good. It's only a 1600 by 1600, which is like a Rift S, I think. But um, I'm going to be looking forward to trying that out with this, uh, with some decent stereo color. The guy seems to have a pretty uh, aggressive plan for improving this. Uh, I know it didn't support the G2 at first, and and now it's, it was just the Valve Index, I think, and the Vive, and it's it's spreading on to others. And I, he does plan to support OpenXR in the future. And before anyone asks, the reason I used uh, X-Plane 11 for this was it runs under Steam, which this is a Steam add-on. 
and um, I wanted to have that available. Frankly, uh, X Plane 12 VR it really is not up to speed yet, and uh, if I'm going to fly X Plane uh, VR, I would use X Plane 11. So this technology is coming, and it really is an exciting time to be involved in flight simulation. So much uh, happening with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator and the outstanding visuals there, and uh, other technology and and add-ons. Uh, it's really blossomed in the last three years or so, probably also due to the uh, lockdowns of COVID. So, um, like I said, an exciting time to be involved, and I think this is a uh, this was definitely worth the time I spent to play around with it and I'll probably play around with it some more and I'll be posting videos if, uh, as I get a new headset and I get other opportunities to uh, explore this so if, you, if you're interested like uh, subscribe share with your friends send comments um, if someone knows why that image is splitting there on me uh, whether it's a bug in the software or something I did wrong uh, why the, uh, the VR image was on the mirror was Set the parking brake and flaps are up. Avionics master off and cut off and ignition switch off and we're done. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon on another of my videos. Have a good day.